right, guys, what's up? Welcome. This is the first episode of Serving It Up podcast, where I get to know individuals through the three pillars of eat good, look good, and live great. Now, today's guest goes by the name Rough Diesel. He's joined the Army at 17. He's now the, a United States Air Force vet. He's the youngest person to turn IFBB Pro at the age of 21, four-time IFBB Pro wins, He's the top five classic physique athlete in the world, placing second at the most recent Arnold Classic. And he's, although born in the small town of Beatrice in Alabama, he is now known all over the world. He's an IFBB pro, three-time Olympian, and someone that I'm happy to call my friend, the homie, Terrence Ruffin. What's up, my man? <laughs> hey, what's up, man? That was a lot of research right there. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> It's, it's yeah, how you doing, man? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. No complaints. Just enjoying uh, the Florida weather. Florida weather. Florida weather. Hope you're safe. As we were talking yeah, about. Yeah, everything's like, good. Safe. It's kind of crazy over there. I haven't seen any craziness, but yeah, I guess. I guess so. I, uh, but no, everything's good here. Yeah, I just, I just go. Uh, live like my life hasn't changed much. It's just a little bit more boring. Like, that one time a month where I would go out into the world and, and have some fun, I just can't have that one day anymore, I guess. But Do you go out often or like? No, uh, not too often, but uh, yeah, I, go, I you know, every now and again, I like to go out and do something. And uh, now I'm just kind of sitting around. I, the most I can do right now is maybe go to the pool in my car, apartment complex or- you swim? I can. I don't swim often, but yeah, I can swim. True, true. When I was a kid, I was going to be a, a lifeguard, but, but I moved to like the middle of nowhere. And uh, yeah, there were no pools anymore. Yeah. All right, I feel you. All right, so let's get this guy going. So when I reached out to you, I asked you to choose either a food or drink that we're going to have onto this podcast. All right, so Ruff, what do you got for us? What'd you choose? I have. Uh, this Swedish um, hard cider, uh, Rick Kordelig. I think that's how you pronounce it. Record Kordelig, right? Yeah. So um, this is imported directly from Sweden. Um, Four point five percent alcohol, so not very high. Okay. And um, yeah, yeah, one hundred and ten calories, so that's a plus. And yeah, I usually drink like normal, like uh, Angry Orchard or something, but I wanted to be fancy because I'm on TV. Or, or YouTube, so I was like, "Oh, this is this is pretty cool." All right, so so you got that, and I'm gonna do the exact same. So whatever you got, I tried to get. So I got Brickwork Cider House. So this one's from Toronto. Um, when you come back to Toronto, I'll show you around. Um, they're like a local guy. It's a little, it's a semi-sweet craft. And I told, I asked you to choose a food or a drink because there's this saying from a French lawyer. His name is Brian Savant. Um, I heard this first quote when I was through Iron Chef, like the old school Iron Chef. So it was, tell me what you eat and I'll tell you what, who you are. So That's for you cool. to choose that cider in a cider, it says that, you know, you, you, you're a little fancy. You're a little fancy. <laughs> I didn't know ciders were fancy. You're a little fancy. Yeah. So you like something different, a little light, a little fresh. You're not yeah. super crazy like an ale kind of guy. You could have chosen something else. But anyways. Let's open this guy up and we'll cheers to you on that one. All right. <laughs> oh, this is good. I like ciders. I'm a big cider dude. Are you a big, like, good. is it good? Yeah, I like it. <laughs> dude, I think I, I would have liked yours a lot too. Like, I'm a big fruity kind of drink kind of dude. Like, juicy kind of stuff. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah, this is good. I like it. Yeah? How much was that? It was about 10 bucks. Okay. Uh, so not too bad. I was like, I was looking for, I was, yeah, it, was, it wasn't too expensive at all, actually. Yeah. Nice. All right. So right from there, I wanted to quickly ask you is, are you a drinker? Are you a big drinker? Even like if you're obviously for you, we both compete. And so like, do you drink often or? No, I don't. I don't. Um, not very often. I only drink, drink on special occasions or. So really, maybe not often at all, man. <laughs> yeah, not often at all. I'll say maybe once a month at tops. 
you know? Uh-huh. Yeah. Are you yeah. more like a beer guy, hard liquor, a wine? Or- so if I'm not drinking like something like this, uh, I do I do drink hard liquor. I'm not a big fan of beer. Uh, but yeah, I definitely I like rum. That's probably my favorite. And, and uh, vodka. Rum and vodka are probably my two favorites. Yeah. Dope. Sick. Cool. All right, dude. So let's get right into sort of the eat good part of uh, serving it up. So first things first is, since I've known you, you're pretty good with food. You like food a lot. So are you a foodie? Do you consider yourself a foodie? Yeah, I think I would. I mean, um, anytime I go to like compete somewhere new, like a month before I get there, I'm like looking up places online. I like to look at food network. Work they have like this. You can look up stuff that's been on TV on like the different TV channels and stuff, like uh, like diners, strawberries, and dives, or man versus food. You can look all this type of stuff up. It's pretty cool. Here, so, all that mm-hmm. okay. All right, so speaking about that, do you watch Food Network more or like food channels more than any other sort of guest television shows? Or no, 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 okay. um, right. I watch it every now and again. But definitely not more than uh, other stuff, yeah. Can you cook now? That's the next thing. Do you consider <laughs> yourself a cook? I, <laughs> I would give my, so like I would, my rating for cooking skills, I would probably give myself uh, maybe a six and a half to seven. That's pretty high. Yeah. I mean, it's better, I'm better than average. Like I see some of these bodybuilders and stuff. And I see what they cook, and I'm like, I can do, I do better than that. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm not shelf level or anything, but now nah, I'm pretty good, I would say. Do you have like, um, what kind of knives do you have? Do you have like a set of knives, or are you are you going? To- I, I have a set of knives. I don't know the name of them. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I have I have a set of knives. I have. Because right like you know how we talk about bodybuilders, and like sometimes you'll see bodybuilders and like on their IGs or YouTube or whatever they're meal prepping. And they'll pull out those like ceramic colorful knives or like no, like, I like, got a fancy one. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Okay, I got a little bit of yeah. They're they're nice, uh, nice uh, wood. I'm looking at them right now. They're like I don't know what kind of wood, but there's some type of wood base, and it mm. still is pretty nice. nice. Plus with like a sharpener and everything. Yeah, you're, you're decent. So we're you know that aligns with your six six point five seven. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, cool. all right. So the next thing is I've got to ask you is people ask me all the time, like, what's your favorite thing to eat? So I'm going to ask you, what's your favorite thing to eat? Oh, man. I don't have a favorite thing, man. Like, I think of people I always say that and I'm never I'm like, I like certain things at certain times. I will say that, like, when I do get in the mood, to, you know, eating something that I like, I will eat it for a very long time until I'm tired of it. And then I don't I feel like the next thing. I know. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, <laughs> sometimes that happens because like, especially with my family and stuff, we'll like one thing. Mm-hmm. And then it'll be like, we're eating after the next week, two weeks, three weeks. And then finally like, okay, we don't want it anymore. And then like, yeah. <laughs> like months on out. Yeah, man. So I definitely mean like for a while, I had got really into different types of cereal. And uh <laughs> Yeah, I had every single different kind. I had cereals from Korea, cereals from all over. And uh, literally just in like the past like two months, I'm like, man, I don't really, really want this anymore. You know, so like I literally just got one, one, uh, one box left. And I usually like on my fridge, if someone looks at like some of my old Instagram or YouTube uh, videos, I, I think I used to have about 10 different cereals on my fridge at any time. We'll get into that. We'll get into that. So I got you on that one. So yeah, we'll get into that. <laughs> Sorry. So next thing I'm going to ask you is, at the current moment, well, with quarantine and stuff, but what's the best thing you've eaten recently? Oh, man. Well, yeah, we've been on quarantine so long. Oh, my goodness. I mean, nothing to, nothing really. <sighs> um, I think, honestly, man, the last time I've really, really been out was when I was up in Toronto with you at the restaurant. Ah, yeah. that was right before the, everything kind of got locked down. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You had a burger, right? I believe you had, a, you had that. I had a, my friend. At, uh, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, that, yeah. that was pretty good for me. 
tight. So that was yeah, that was the last that was the last good thing I had, I think. Yeah. I mean I've had food, <laughs> but nothing like a restaurant quality since then really. Got you. All right. So the next thing I'm gonna ask you is real quick is is there something like a recipe or cuisine that you want to learn how to cook? Like you're like, I've always wanted to learn how to do that. I don't know about wanting to cook. I guess I would just to try it, but I do want to have one of those Japanese uh, fluffy pancakes. Uh, Dude, I have yeah, a recipe. Yeah. I'll, send you that. I'll send you that right after this. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen videos. I just never took the time to make it. Dude, if you're um, it's pretty cool. five, seven, it's as easy for you to make. <laughs> but yeah, I like those. I was supposed to have them last time I was in Korea. Um, but I don't know what happened. I just, I got busy or something. I didn't have a chance to, to go find a restaurant with it. Um, because it was like in a different district of the uh, of uh, Seoul that I was in, I just and I just yeah. forgot. Okay. But yeah. All right. So now you brought it up earlier, so we're gonna bring it up. I was gonna bring it up anyways, but uh, <laughs> for those that don't know, you you've got another nickname. You know, people call you Rough Diesel. I call you Rough. Some people call you Terrence, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. But people call you Serial Killer. C e r e a l. <laughs> like they don't know that you love cereal and you sort of talked about that um want to sort of go is that like your favorite like snack food or like what's what's the deal with cereal so yeah i would have that just after my workouts that would be my that my meal i would have it's a good time to have it for the that time, you know? before uh matt before mp yeah yeah matt matt had put it in my plan and so i i i eat cereal pretty much every day for almost uh maybe a year and a half, two years. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just kind of, yeah, eventually you kind of get tired of tired of it. I mean, like I pretty much had every kind of cereal I could find, um, every variation, Oreos, um, vanilla Oreo cereal, Eggo cereal, blueberry Eggo, the big Reese's Puffs that are like that, that yeah. big. You're from the um, state, so you get like some insane ones. But we'll that's the thing too, yeah. If, up where you at, yeah, there's definitely not nearly as many options. Yeah. When you come back, we'll get some like the Tim bits. You know, you know Tim Hortons. Yeah, yeah, I've seen those. Yeah. Yeah, we'll catch. Yeah. But a quick, quick is um, quick shout out, Matt Porter, rest in peace. I so that's how I sort of met you. Was aside from social was Matt Porter. Mm -hmm. thing. Um, so that was really cool. That was dope. But all right, we're gonna get into the next thing. So this is the. This is part of the last sort of part of Eat Good here, where I call it in the weeds. So in restaurant lingo, I don't know if you've heard, but when you're a chef or you're a cook or in the sh and you're in the weeds, it's me it means like you're in the shits. Like you're in the, you're rushed, you're slammed, all the orders and pickups are all coming in. So I'm actually going to throw you sort of like a couple quick questions and you've got to answer them in like a couple seconds. Cool? Oh, all right. All right. All right. Yeah. Ready for this? All right. No, but okay. All right, I'm gonna take a quick little sip. Here we go. Okay, Shake Shack or In and Out? Shake Shack. In and Out sucks. In and Out sucks. <laughs> I'm a big Shake Shack fan. All right, pizza or burgers? Burgers. Ooh. Chips or cookies? Cookies. Muffins or cakes? Oh, um, cake. Ooh. Fries or ice cream? Ice cream. No. Yeah. Order yeah. stuff. That's it. That's a pretty good meal, though. That was tough. You really can't all those items. That is tough. Yeah, I guess burgers. So I got a burger with some ice cream. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Burgers, the ice cake. cream, cookies, and yeah, cake. Oh, all right. goodness. I cool. definitely got a sweet tooth. Yeah, yeah you're a sweet tooth guy? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, just by the choices, yeah. Honestly, yeah. I, I will, I only, I'm not a sweet tooth dude. But if I get like a taste of it, then I'm like addicted. Not addicted, but I'll go for more. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. <laughs> cool. So that was all right. Let's go right into like the look good part. So a lot of people. This is what most people know you about, right? They know you for being Mr. You know, Mr. Aesthetics, Mr. Rough Diesel. So we'll get into this because this is something that I think a lot of people will like to hear. So you are let's preface one of the most aesthetic physiques right now on the circuit, if not through a couple, several errors. And honestly, for me, it's like no bias, but you're, you're like one of my favorite physiques. And I like it cause also 
we're very similar in regards to structure, meaning height, height and sort of age. Um, okay. But I don't know, how, how old are you, Terrence? I am 26. Yeah, 26. And um, what, how, how tall are you? Um, five, five on a good day. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I, mean, I get right away. I'll call you after that. <laughs> yeah, on a not a good day, five, four, and three fourths. Yeah, they measure me different a lot of times at different shows, so it's tough to really say. Yeah, so for people who are watching, I asked Terrence this is not just because of like sort of, uh, like I said, we sort of have the same structure in regards to height and stuff, but because in classic physique, they're all about weight and height. So Terrence, you've got your little sort of constraint you got to be in where you're totally growing out of that you freaking beast you are just <laughs> outgrowing that insane what are you weighing right now i am 195 pounds so yeah that's the heaviest you've been um i technically was one 198 um right before mad pass but uh yeah i didn't hold that for very long yeah i, I didn't hold that weight very long at all but yeah, 195 is pretty. I mean, it's pretty. It's pretty damn close. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm about 20 pounds over my weight limit right now. Okay. All right. So everyone's gonna want to know: Are you prepping for anything right now? You know, what is it? It's July with all these COVID and everything. But you prepping for the Olympia? Um, I'm getting ready for it. Yeah, yeah. I just put on some weight, so yeah. I'm gonna kind of maintain 195. Um, for like another for a while like another two months or so just kind of maintain it this way maybe get up to 200 i've never been 200 pounds that'd be pretty cool to break into the twos and then um from there uh, we'll start cutting now so uh, in sep september i believe or uh, yeah i'll start i'll start prepping for the olympia um as in like cutting cutting uh down yeah are you going to be working with um with john still like yeah, I'm still working with John. Nice. Uh, John and Joe. Uh, John does all my nutrition and everything. And then uh, I train with Joe. Right now, I'm just training with Joe once a week. But I'm guessing um, when I get to that 16 week out point, I'll probably start training with him more frequently. Yeah. So for those who are sort of like listening and stuff, Terrence, Terrence got John Meadows on his corner. He's got Joe Bennett. And I think like, the two combo, when I saw you work with them, that I thought was really cool was that. They both don't really have like BS. They're not fluffy. They're not like extra crazy. No crazy. Thing. <laughs> They're just really just basic things, you know. Yeah, yeah. They're definitely my um, my type of people. So yeah, it's, it makes it a lot easier to work with them too. Yeah, that's that's crazy. It's it's cool to watch you grow. It's it's sick. All right. So now let's talk about this. So because of COVID, obviously type of gyms and everything. I saw that you built your own little home gym. Mm hmm. How was that? How was that? Was it, what was your? Um, no, nah, it was cool. Looking back on it, I guess, like, with, with everything, I was talking to my buddy the other day about it. I was like, for Florida, I think gyms might have closed for a month total. Um, so I was like, in retro, and, you know, in hindsight, I probably didn't need to buy all the stuff I did, but I probably spent about five, four or five grand on everything. I bought a uh, Smith machine. Um, like a, right. a, a play loaded squat press. You say what? You got like a T bar, like a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a chest supported T bar, and I had a um, seated leg curl machine. I think that's oh, and a lat pull down. So yeah, that's everything I had. And I can pretty much get everything done with that. Yeah. Are you keeping those? Are you gonna plan to keep those when when everything's all said and done? Oh uh, man, I think I'm. I think I'm gonna probably sell it because uh, I was thinking, because for a while, because I, I eventually I do kind of probably want to have like my own gym. Um, but uh, a lot of the equipment is some of the equipment I have isn't even commercial use, like the pull down mm. and the Smith machine. Um, so I couldn't put the, I couldn't even put that in the gym. So I was like, I might as well just sell everything because, um, like I said, it wasn't super. Expensive. I got all of it used, which is pretty cool. Um, like the most expensive piece was the squat, um, play loaded squat, uh, squat machine. 
and it was um, 1500 So that was probably the most expensive. Everything else was, you know, pretty fair in price. Um, I got the weights for like 80 cents a pound, which is really nice. Yeah, yeah. Because I know a lot of people. Did they know you? Did they know you? Like, were you like, they're like, oh, yo, it's rough. I'm, I'm going to make sure you get some. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no. It's funny, man. Like, people talk about, like, it's just initiative, man. Like, people didn't, like, granted, like, where you're at, man, it was a lot harder because uh, I even looked, I looked up there. Uh, but I, I looked on uh, Facebook, Facebook uh, Marketplace and eBay. That's where I got everything. Okay. And, um, yeah, I found really good deals on um, both. Sweet. All right, dude. So, Aside from obviously competing, you do coaching and you do posing, right? So mm -hmm. let's talk about that. That is your, what you would call it, your bread and butter at the moment in regards to income? Yeah, coaching is pretty much the main the main thing I make my money from. Uh, I have about 65 clients, I believe, uh, last time I, I checked. Uh, posing I do every now and again. Um, I don't like to do a ton of that anymore. Um, actually in talks of hiring, uh, like, a, an instructor though, uh, one that I, uh, so, and he would, um, handle like a lot of more of the low, like, um, of people wanting to do posing through me. Like I would kind of like, I don't know, certify him and he would, uh, handle a lot of that. So, um, that's pretty cool. I literally just got off the phone with him before, before, uh, this call here. Yeah. So that should be fun. That should be finalized by hopefully next week nice yeah like yeah. uh it would be like what it would be a rough diesel posing certification well it's pretty cool it's pretty i, I mean i don't know RDPC. <laughs> i guess eventually i could do something Great like that but, but uh it's more so like so like my whole like the brand of my posing is just called the posing academy so like he would just be like a teacher got you yeah in the academy so yeah um and i eventually want wanted to have some he's mainly going to do classic physique um which makes sense because that's most of the people that come come uh come to me anyway but i would like to have at least the next person i would like to give would like be like a miss physique person to teach uh mystery guys and possibly uh eventually adding other categories to you know do you have a lot of um female clients or is it more predominantly male it's predominantly male, man. Uh, my whole following, my like my uh, following is ninety three percent male and seven percent female. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. So overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly guys follow me and, and, and subscribe and everything like that. All right. Cool. Um, so I wanted to talk to you about is what is a big pet peeve of yours since you as a coach and you. Um, did workshops and posing seminars and all that what is like a big pet peeve that you see people, people do either on stage or in the gym oh cool uh, i thought you were gonna say like as a coach but uh, <laughs> okay um big pet peeve on stage man just not um just bad posing like i don't expect them to be great but like at least know the fundamentals of how to hit a pose uh, and that just shows me they didn't actually take the time out to prepare for the contest properly. You know, they didn't. Um, so there's that. Um, in the gym, I don't like people who don't know what they're doing trying to teach other people. So <laughs> that's, that's the thing. I saw it the other day. There's some trainers in the gym, and I'm so, always so nervous, like he's going to hurt one of his uh, clients. Um, Yes, I'm always super nervous about that. But do you ever? Yeah, that's problem too. Do you ever um, go? Are you that kind of guy that might go up to them? Because now, obviously, like people know who you are, so like they might be okay with you coming up and saying, "Hey, look, this is not how you do it," or "Can I show you something?" Or are you are you still just let it be? Well, in that situation, since he's a trainer, I don't think it'll be. It's kind of tough to find the right time. To do that because one one that's his his job and i'm not gonna mess with his money and you know that's kind of kind of messed up um and that's embarrassing no matter how you kind of come come at a person you know what i mean yeah uh so that's kind of difficult um and two like he's so far gone it wouldn't be like a one thing fix it would be like yo every single thing you need 
He really, it's really bad, man. Like, he would literally need to change everything he does. Give us, like, an example of what, what would be, like, a really bad thing that he would be teaching, making his clients go through. Oh, man. It's just simple things, like, um, just his setup for exercises and form. Just, he doesn't know, he doesn't know how to um, properly set up people to perform an exercise. And they're like moving every. They're doing like a, a bench press or something, and their joints are all moving like all oh. weird. Like when they're pressing it, you know. Um, yeah, that's probably one of the biggest things. And then when people are asking questions on like something, like they feel something in a certain place, you know. As a coach, nine times, like nine times out of ten, if you actually you know like have any type of background in in training people, you would know like. A, why they're feeling something in a weird place and how to adjust how to adjust it and he literally has no idea his his, his answer is like oh, i'll just move around until it feels okay and i'm like i mean what technically isn't wrong but at that point then why am i paying you if i gotta yeah, figure I, it out myself you know? i got you yeah so okay. uh, <laughs> I mean, okay. yeah 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 I so i feel you i get it i totally get it um all right the next thing i'm gonna ask you is okay so aside from obviously you can quote unquote people say whether you, I don't know if you agree or not, but you do have also these genetically freaky body in regards to your proportions, your insertions and all that stuff. Um, but people arguably know you as one of the best posers, if not the best posers of all time. Okay. Right now. How do you feel about that? Like, I don't think, I don't know. I think it's cool. And, um, honestly, I just try not to, <laughs> to think about it at all, uh, you know. Uh, no, nah, I, I know that my posing is good, but I know there's there's other people who can pose really well too. And uh, you know, um, like that one guy I really like. His name's Pete Hardwick. He's a great poser. Um, we just got different styles, you know. So um, I don't know how I feel about this. It's pretty. I, I don't really, I don't really, I've never really confronted it. Uh, but no, I definitely, I definitely can recognize that I'm a good poser and that that's something. That's something. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, you're good. Okay. That's something that um, I want to uh, be known for. Yeah. But I kind of feel like I still got so much more to improve on. Um, and I, yeah, I definitely feel like what, that way. Um, I know a lot of people love the routine I did in 2018. Uh, that's probably what I'm best known for, the Toronto uh, yes. Survivor routine. Yes. Um, I got to see that live, which was. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I'm thinking, like, you know, that's one. I didn't get to pose at the Olympia that year. So I've only done two other routines since then. Uh, and I like both. I think, they're, I think the two routines I, I did since then, just did since then are great. I just think I need like more, uh, um, more, more routines that, to be kind of considered one of the one of the best. Because I look at Lita Brada and Kai, and they have tons of good, good routines, you know. So, yeah, so but I'm still young, so I got I got like another, I don't know, five ten years to to add to that list. You'll be you'll be posing since until you're like 95 or until you're on your deathbed, dude. We all know that. <laughs> People are gonna come up to you like, Mr. 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 Ruffin, can you can you hit a back double for us? Can you show us the vacuum? Oh my goodness. Nah, dude. I, <laughs> once I'm done with bodybuilding, I don't know, man. If if I can, I'll be I'll probably be I don't know, man. I don't know. I'll probably still go to like some of the bigger shows and stuff, man. But I'll be kind of traveling the world, enjoying my life, doing what doing is, brand stuff. Um, for those who don't know about Terrence, uh, anybody who's watching, Terrence is an insane poser. Now, when in we're talking about like bodybuilding, Terrence knows exactly how to freaking showcase his strengths and people that doesn't have much weak points to minimize our height. <laughs> it's, like it's like watching someone dance when Terrence um, poses. Like, this is this is no like trying to like suck up or anything like you're everybody knows this everybody knows you're good so and you brought it up was Kai and me and you talked about this we've talked about this all the time and Kai literally was one of those guys that had a big influence on you mm -hmm. I remember 
what was that your 2014? Was this 2014? The one that you did the almost like a Dirty Diana dance sort of closing routine? I don't know. I know. Uh, no, I've never done any trunks. like. So what? You had the red trunks on. So yeah, one of those routines. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the red trunks was the last show I did. It was 2014. I was also 2014. I did the song I did at that show. If um, was a uh, a Chris Calico song. I forget the I forget the the um, name of the song now. Yeah, I forget. I don't remember. I think it. I think it may be like. Um, Twisted or something like I can't remember now, but it was yeah yeah it's a Chris Calico song. I, like, I, um, yeah, I was gonna say for people who watched it, like you tried to hit some of those like those Kai Green hits and like the the movements, the the flex mm -hmm. and the pops and locks. And I think a big thing that makes your posing routines look so cool and they are so flow so well is you're also your song choices are great. You're not choosing what sort of like maybe mainstream at the moment or hitting <laughs> the clubs you yeah. are, you're finding like the mixes and like you're getting really artistic and into it and i think that what that's what makes you so different in regards to your posing stuff yeah man song choice is like very very important man yeah i remember you i think um, on your social you posted uh you did one with william singh like one of his songs I'm, yeah i like william singh yeah he's I awesome. had really good song so like when i saw you like yo dude sick <laughs> all right yeah i was just listening to him the other day oh sweet um next thing i want to talk to you about is posing in korea you sort of brought it up too how insane was that so for those who don't know um you were guest posing or doing a seminar over in monster gym in korea and mm -hmm. you posed in what was that center the square oh yeah yeah that one okay because i did a couple different routines yeah that one was cool that one was um, literally um, in the, what would you call that area? Like the government, the, 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 the I, don't, I guess it may be the, the city center. And that's, cause that's where the embassies were and stuff like okay. that, all were in that area. Um, it was a really cool spot. Cause on the left side of me was one embassy on the right side was like another embassy. Behind me was like the old, um, like I don't, I guess they preserve like some of the older buildings. I'm not sure what they call it, but um, dude, yeah, that was awesome, man. Yeah, uh, <laughs> was so cool. me and my friend uh, Phil Choi, he um, he he's a uh, Korean, but he lives in uh, New Jersey. He kind of traveled back and forth. Uh, yeah, we just kind of. I actually didn't post to the song he um, that everyone sees. I post to a different song. Okay. I think I post to. Uh, I don't know what I posed to at the time, but I posed to a different song and he put that song over it. And I still, I still love it. It still, it still matched it's up pretty so good. It's so cool. It's so cool. It's like, cause it almost looks like they cleared the, the whole like, <laughs> the square for you. Like you're dead center. There's like no yeah. one around you, but they're all in the background. And then you're just posing in the middle <laughs> of Korea. Dude. I'm surprised more people didn't come up to me while I was doing that. Yeah. Like, um, after we finished, we were nervous too, man, because we thought, like, you know, being in that area that, you know, the cops, because there's cops all around that they yeah. say something, but they were all chill, man. Like, one of them came up after I was done and got a photo with me. It was fun. Nice, nice, sweet. All right, so I'm going to get you, just like how we did with Ika, we're going to go into a little uh, sort of rapid fire uh, questionnaire. I'm calling this reps and sets because you're into the fitness game. So we're going to okay. go reps and sets, all right? Dumbbells or bars? Dumbbells. Go to cheat meal. Burger and fries. Best era, 80s, 90s, or current? 90s. What, would you rather do one hour of steady state cardio or 15 minutes of hit? 15 minutes of hit. <laughs> That's that Matt Porter oh, stuff. <laughs> That's still, both of those were shitty. I shitty. <laughs> Do you rather do big body, big upper body with no legs, or legs with no upper body? I guess legs with no upper body. That's what I started with. <laughs> yeah. Let's just All right. stay there. All right, last one. Chris or Breon? Uh, Chris. I say Chris, yeah. Mm. Okay. <laughs> All right, I was trying to throw some fire into there. That was tough, yeah. Uh, I, I knew you weren't going to say yourself, but I was like, ah, maybe I'll try it. We'll see. 
<laughs> we'll see. I like that. Yeah. They're both awesome, but yeah, I like that question. Yeah, they're all. I, people right. probably think like I chose it for a certain reason, but like I kind of, in my head going through it, I kind of thought of like everything, like the whole person concept, not just like the physiques or anything like that. Yeah. Got you. All right, I guess pulling into that, who is somebody aside from Chris Breon yourself? Do you see as this the next up and coming? The guy who's like everybody should be watching for. Oh, cool! Yeah, definitely. There's a guy. He's competing in Tampa Pro. Uh, shoot, I'm bad with names because he's in, like I say he's newer. I think this will be his pro debut. But uh, his name's either Deontay or Deontre Campbell. Okay. Um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He looks awesome, man. Um. No, no, uh, no weaknesses. No, no weaknesses anywhere, man. Yeah, he's. I don't. I don't know who's doing the Tampa Pro, but I don't think he's gonna lose i can say that much um it's funny that not many people are talking about him yeah yeah um but i'm all but it's the same all the time it's very rare that a person um that has gone pd yet gets a whole bunch of publicity um uh, but not nah, i always see it man whether it was him when it was when it was keon I, I i like i'm like a fan of the sport so i pay attention to a lot of the new guys coming up Yes, sir. And, um, yeah, he's definitely going to do very, very well. Crazy. Cool. Well, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm going to go check him out, too. Check him yeah. Out. yeah. Coming. I want to make sure I see. Because like you said, a lot of times, unless, like, the bigger uh, accounts or media outlets showcase somebody, they're really they, – as, how as amazing that they can be, mm -hmm. they don't know them until they hit that, you know, win a show or something. You're right, you're right, you're right. You're definitely right, yeah. You're all right. right, so let's get into now Live Great. So Live Great is all things about myself, is about life, lifestyle. Um, so for you right now, you've gone to this point where you were Air Force vet, you were in the Air Force Army, you left there, and then now you've sort of got into your career and you've built this brand and name of Rough Diesel, you know, Terrence Ruffin, competitor coach posing seminars um clothing line all of that how how crazy has that been like has that been something that you thought you would get into or was that something that you just now have bought into and you've sort of harnessed and taken to get it over <laughs> yeah man i had no idea i was gonna be a bodybuilder i mean i didn't start bodybuilding until i was uh 18 you yeah. know yeah. Uh, so no, it wasn't something I, I kind of knew all along. Um, and even then, like I didn't know my first. Um, yeah, I honestly thought it would take a lot longer to get to where I am. Uh, yeah, I thought it would take me, but not longer. I thought it. I didn't take. I don't know so much longer, but I thought I would have to have more muscle in a sense. So I guess longer in that sense. Yeah. Um, but no, I never really, um, I, I just, I'm such a go with the flow type of guy, True. you know, I found, you know, the thing that I'm good at, you know, I'm blessed to, blessed to be able to say that, you know, some people, it, it takes them a lot longer to find something that they're meant to do. Um, so I found what I'm good at and, and I've just been, um, working hard to get to, to, um, develop those skills and get, get even better. Um, because, you know, even though, like, I'm, I, you know, I got a certain degree of um, born talent to do bodybuilding, so does every other guy that's, you know, competing in the pro league. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's that. But then also with the business side of it, um, you know, I just <laughs> – I work best under pressure. So, yeah, definitely uh, once I got in the military, I was like, oh, shit, I need money. So um, definitely have to. That's that's the biggest that's one of the biggest drivers right there. Yeah. Not to be like homeless. So <laughs> so yeah, yeah. And um, now that I'm in a com I'm finally in a comfortable situation. Um now I'm just trying to figure out how to grow things and make things even better. Um uh, yeah. Let's talk about your clothing line. Tribe aesthetics or tribe athletics, right? Mm -hmm. How's that going? For those who don't know, Terrence, he's got a clothing line. Um how how's that been like every sort of every um i guess bigger name individual or anybody that has that starts having a brand has merch has has some sort of thing you want clothing 
and you've always been very cool in regards to your clothing because a they always look good on you you've got a, you got the physique cool but you also <laughs> have really cool like designs you're not like you know not the usual stuff <laughs> yeah man i didn't want anything that like that dealt with the barbell or anything i drew to be honest with you i drew a lot of inspiration from uh dart sports style i like their stuff um so i, I kind of you know i kind of wanted to model things a little bit after them but also you know i definitely wanted my own thing too um and i i have a mentor and a friend she actually lives up in toronto um helen she she's not in the fitness industry she's uh done amazing things in the tech world though uh, very very popular there and um i always bounce off ideas you know with her and things and even another lady from um from canada my ex um she helped me i you know she helped me build build the clothing line um so yeah uh yeah aisha she definitely uh, played a big role in that as well so you know those those two people helped me quite a bit with with growing the so the whole it was just funny because the whole like meaning behind the clothing line was like any great thing that a person does they never do it alone so mm -hmm. i would be like a hypocrite to say like oh yeah i built i built the clothing line by myself okay. you know? and then people say that all the time but nine times out of ten man it's very rare that i've ever seen someone actually do something completely on their own you know yeah whether it's some other person that taught them how to do something some other person that you know, help them out, you know, financially, emotionally, mentally, to get to, to a certain point. It's very rare that I've ever met someone that actually did something gotcha. completely on their own. So that's kind of like the meaning behind it, man. There's always a, a tribe of people out there that, that, that'll help you get to something. Crazy, cool. Um, all right, next thing about people I want to know about your life is you are an anime superhero fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People, yeah. Know that. People don't know that about you. So let's let's talk about that. What's like, what's your favorite superhero? That's tough, man. Um, I don't know, man. I like a lot of different ones. I mean, some of the superheroes I like are kind of generic, like Superman, the Hulk. But I know a little bit more about them because people don't like Superman because they say, ah, oh, he's really um, generic. But if they actually knew his story, like he's not, he's pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, the Hulk has some pretty cool um, arcs, like uh, World War Hulk, uh, Mastro. Um, but besides that, this is a really cool one that he was in a movie, but very, very short. His name's uh, Darwin. Okay. And his superpower is he should, his superpower is he can, uh, his body can uh, survive anything. So like, if you throw him in water, he grows gills. Um, if you, if he gets punched really hard, then his skin hardens, you know, different stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Okay, that's that's sick. What about anime? We talked anime. about anime. You're, you're you're into anime. You you told me to watch what was that? What's that food anime that you wanted me to watch? Is it food? Wolf? I don't know. Um, I don't really watch food anime all that much. There is one though. I, I I think it's like Food Wars or something. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> my favorite one, my favorite one is Naruto, without a doubt. Um, literally. Uh, Still watching that. I'm ready. They got um, the sequel now, which is Boruto, which is the sign, um, which is cool. I like it. Kind of wish they would have like did more with Naruto, like an another um, show about him being an adult before before the kid came around. But it is what it is. Um, besides that, My Hero Academia. That was uh, cool. That's good. Some ones uh, that aren't super mainstream would be like Kogias. Uh, shoot, Ber Berserk, Berserk, uh, and yeah, those are those are two really good ones I can think. Of. Oh, Hunter X Hunter, yeah, those, those are some of the ones I really like. Okay, true. Um, now we're talking about that. So, what would be your superpower if you had one, dude? One. None of this, like, my superpower would be to have more superpowers or like. <laughs> Yo, so me and my friend was talking about this the other day, and they said, what would your power be based on your personality? And um, mine would be, <laughs> literally, I did, a, like, I did a little test on it, too. Like, so Hunter x Hunter, um, that show is pretty, they actually talk about that, like, um, what powers are, and, and how your powers are based on your personality. And mine, I think, would be, I'm, like, simpler. Like, I'm not super, like, I'm, like, 
this is the answer. This is how you, this is point A, point B. This is how you do it. No, no overthinking or anything. So I'm real. So, um, what it said mine would be was like um, just like a strength based superpower. So either be super strong or super like durable, like Luke Cage or something like that. So that would be my or like Colossus, one of those three guys: Colossus, Hulk, uh, or what's the other guy? Luke Cage. Yeah, he's good. He's good. That's a good guy. That's not what I would, that's like based on my personality wise, yeah, that's how it would be. But I like Darwin's power, like I said before. Mm, yeah. true, true. All right, I'm going to ask you now another thing is sort of about life is you can, you can get into it as much as you want or as not, or you can like pass on this, but what's a bucket list item for you, dude? What's something on your bucket list? Does it have, it could be anything, but in, in life, like at the end of the day, you're like, I want to get this done before I say bye. I have no bucket list items just yet. I have goals. Okay. But like, I mean, like, I, yeah, like, I mean, like, I have goals. And I figure, like, for some people, they might be, like, huge goals. But, um, like, I'm trying to think of anything bucket list-wise. Because, I mean, like, I've done a lot. I feel like I've done a lot of things. I haven't done a lot of things, but I have done a lot of more than a lot of people, I'd say. Like, I've traveled around the world. I've... Uh, you know, swimming with dolphins. Um, I mean, I can't really think of anything bucket listy. Like, I mean, something like I feel like a bucket list thing has to be something fucking huge. Like maybe going into space. Okay. Yeah, that might be. All, and I don't really want to go to space. <laughs> so I mean, <laughs> you want to go to space? You know, it's crazy. Like I love space movies. I like that's literally my favorite type of genre. Like movie wise, it's all the like Interstellar. Um, What's the new one? The um, shoot Cloverfield. All those movies are great. Yeah. Um, Mar Martian, but yeah, uh, but nah. Like I think about going to space. And I'm like, that sounds awful. <laughs> I think I think if they like commercialize it like they have in some of the movies, like that, like it's in the future, then maybe, yeah. uh, maybe when Elon Musk gets all the bugs out of um, commercial flight, that'll be something I would love to do. Um, that's kind of like futuristic talk, but. But yeah, that'll probably be my bucket list item. Cause I mean, there's things I want to do. Like I want to pose in a music video, but I don't. I feel like that's gonna happen within the next, you know, three years. Um, I want to do. I want to make a million dollars, and I feel like that'll happen in the next, you know, within the next decade. So, you know, if you did an um, OnlyFans, it would happen in the next two hours. Like. <laughs> So no, I don't. I can't really think of anything bucket listy, man. Like, my <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think of it. What if you? What's your bucket list uh, thing? And maybe I can think um, of one of the things that I always wanted. It's really, it's really funny, but I always wanted to be like on a big stage. Okay. In front of like a big crowd. You know, like when you watch. Uh, events or you watch documentaries of like a rapper or like a DJ or or mm -hmm. whether it's like Tony Robbins or Gary V or any of those guys they're on the stage and like they mm -hmm. it's for me it's this one view of me looking out and just like a sea of people that okay. are there for you or they okay. need something about you that they want to be there to hear you or listen to you or whatever it is and I just want to be there and just jam out that'd be so cool like <laughs> that's awesome man yeah, but that's, awesome. that's, that's something I look at. I see myself on the stage with whoever I'm with on the stage and just a bunch of people. I just like had this weird thought of like this weird like mash of different like artistries and like like you're on stage like cooking and then you got like a fucking DJ like Dan Mouse like fucking playing music and and you're like jamming out, cutting up food. Dude, I, and then I, you're, like flying the food out to the crowd and then like eating it that'd be awesome man any 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 person that would like to ask me to do that i am more than happy on like um on my tiktok are you on tiktok i am not but i i, I am but i have i don't really look at okay. it yeah okay, like so so for me on my tiktok some things i do is i, I cut to beats mm -hmm. so oh that's cool songs and I'll, I'll cut to the beat and like that's been something cool because like I get to sort of find and hear and figure out all these cool songs that are coming out 
And for me, I get to try to cut for that. That'd be cool. Like, a, like, a Dude, like honestly, man, like, there's so many, like, things are blending so much now, as you can see, like, with music, you know, there's not, like, people, it's so hard to categorize, um, categorize artists anymore half the time. Maybe. You know, I like, like, one of my favorite artists is Tory Lanez, but is he a rapper or is he an R&B singer? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, he's, he's he's Canadian, yeah, yeah, I forgot, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah. So I mean, like even the things like everyone, they're blending everything, man. You think about, um, dude, I you literally could probably do something really cool, like have like a, a some type of event, and Toronto would definitely be the place for it, where you could have like it would be like almost like a party, like literally, like I said, but on a small, it wouldn't be quite on the scale, but like yeah, have a fucking DJ. And you're cutting, and then it's like something like an experience, like a eating experience slash you know music experience, and it's like a it's a really cool. I will go to that event, you know. It's all because uh, like you, like, you touch on that. It's real quick. I'll just touch real quick on here. It's because it's not about me on this one, but you. But, um, all right. There's a there's a there's a I've I've had this project in my mind that touches on that. That's based on food and music, food and music. Um, but we're working on it. We're working on it. And it's just been a little hard because of quarantine. Like, the yeah. industry has hit hard. It hit hard. Yeah. But anyways, we can talk about that next time. I want to get into now, this, this now, it's the live good side of this rapid fire. I'm calling this YOLO, all right? So you only live once. So these are questions you're going to have to choose. You only live once on them. Super Saiyan or Superman? Superman. Marvel or Capcom? Marvel. Win the Olympia once or be the greatest of all time for posing? <laughs> greatest of all time. Posing, okay. <laughs> this guy wants the title. That's fucking awesome. All right. Live anywhere in the world. Shit. Um, dude, I don't know. I, I really want to go to Seoul right now. I've been wanting to go there. Yeah. Okay. All right, sweet. All right, so now I'm gonna take you on and we're gonna go into a little segment here. I'm gonna share my screen where I'm calling it, so it's called Social Hour. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sort of dig dive into your socials. Your tic- I tried to look at your TikTok. Your TikTok didn't have too many things. So yeah. we're, gonna go into, we're gonna go into your gram. We're gonna dig up some questions here and um, we'll just get a, you know, the, look, the nitty gritty behind some of these, these posts, cool? All right. <laughs> All right. Let's set this guy up. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. All yeah. right, Terrence. What's up with this? What's up, Black Panther? <laughs> yeah, man. So this is back when I was living in Maryland. I only lived there for a year. Um, Odinson area. And uh, this local photographer, this is right before the movie came out, the photographer hit me up. I said, hey, man, I like your physique. I wanted to uh, see if you wanted to shoot with me. And um, I've never done anything like this before, so, but I'm always open to experiences. So I was like, yeah, let's, let's do it. So like, I came in, and um, they had this woman who was on, what's that? The, she was on TV for like the painting, like the body painting show. I forget what it's called. Well, oh, I, I know what you're talking about, but I never watched it, but OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was on Sci-Fi, maybe. Okay. And um, that took oh, that took quite a bit of time, and, but it, it came out awesome. Like, the funny thing is she didn't do my back, so my whole back is just just normal. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Did she, just... she accentuate any of the, any uh, of the striations and the, the muscle? I don't, think, I don't think she did. I don't think she, I don't think she was that, that advanced to do, okay. but I don't think so. How long did uh, it take her? You said what? How long did it take her? Shoot, it took a while. I feel like maybe, it would, well, I guess sometimes I hear the people like that do it in movies, so it didn't take that long. It took maybe like an hour and a half, mm. I think, an hour and a half to take to do everything. And she had to do like several of us. Okay. So we were there like all day. And um, <laughs> so like it was, um, it was me and then there was like, I think like three or four ladies and they were all nude. And I was just like, this is, it was different for me. It was a whole new experience. And like, I didn't, I was trying to figure out how to pose. I didn't know what to do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was definitely not, my, I figured that's where I learned. Cause people make fun of models sometimes, but like, I'm like, yo, that's actually a skill 
Yeah. Because you have to develop, like, knowing how to move your body in the certain positions and how to look at the camera. I was like, that's, that's difficult. It's like posing. Mm hmm It is. It's exactly. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Did, uh, did Chadwick, did he reply? Did he, like, did he see this? Nah. He, nah. Okay. That was bad. Like, yeah. I can back on this. He needs to. <laughs> Maybe I could be his, um, his body. I couldn't be his body double. Like, he would look, like, ten times bigger in, like, his fight scenes, and then, like, <laughs> he would shrink down. But yeah, he didn't reply. Uh, all right. Okay, next one we are gonna go is all right, dude. Oh, that was fun, man. This was um, I went to Curacao, the home of uh, Roly Winkler, the Winkle brothers, and um, I was just hanging out at the beach, man, and um. These kids saw me, and I was like, why not? I, I just, I, I picked those two up, and then, like, another kid, he's a little bit heavier. <laughs> he wanted to be picked up, too, so I don't know where that photo is, but it's a picture of me picking up all three of them at the same time. Where'd you put and, the third uh, guy? You say what? Where, where was the third guy? Like, I think he was on, like, I like he was, on, like, on my neck. Okay. Yeah, like, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, no, I had a great time over there, man. I'm, I still talk to the guys that, that showed me around nice. uh, when I was there. And uh, yeah, it was really, really fun, man. I did like an ATV tour while I was there, went to the beach. It's I want to go back, man, but it's really expensive to get to that island. Um, for what I guess because it's a small airport, so not a lot of people, you know, go back and forth, so it's expensive. But, dude, I had a great time. It's very diverse there, too. Um, so you got like, it's like a, a blend of like African and I think it used to be owned by some European country, like uh, Norway, I think. And then there's a lot of Asians there. So it's a really blended, a blended area. Gotcha, gotcha. It looks cool, looks cool. It looks so tropical. Yeah, it's definitely, yeah, definitely tropical. It's an island, it's right above um, South America. Okay, sweet. All right, next one, dude. This one. Ah uh, yeah, so that's the picture I took when I got out the last day in the Air Force. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, do not miss the Air Force, but I I do appreciate the time I did, I had in there. Yeah. And you were there for how long? I did six years, six years in the midst. So seventeen to um, I um I don't know how old I was, uh, but two thousand and eleven to two thousand seventeen. And like I, I was going when I was looking for some of these photos. There was a, there was one of those photos where you're just getting into the Air Force. You're super scrawny. You're like a small. Oh yeah, yeah. Air Force. <laughs> Look at this freaking back. Look at this thing. <laughs> those uniforms actually are already made to make like the soldiers look bigger. And then, like, when you're actually big, they make you look bigger. <laughs> or, and I think I have to, I had to get a lot of my stuff tailored too. Like a lot of my uniforms had to be like fitted. Uh, I had to get it, which was expensive. Yeah. Because they were just too small, or the, just the 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 shape was weird. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I I uh, would a lot of some sometimes I would buy new uniforms. I didn't buy them too often, but a lot of times they got this area where you can just get used once for free on base, and I would just have to pay to get those tailored. Got you. All right, yeah. last one, dude. Last one, man. This one. Oh, yeah, it's a cereal one, yeah. Cereal. So for me, I, I chose this one because, like, we don't get any of this stuff here in, in Canada. Like, we don't get to have all these crazy things. So yeah. when I saw this, I was like, I need to know which one was the best one here. On this one, uh, it's tough. I would probably say the – I know a lot of the one – what I would normally do – with all of these, just, I would actually mix that Ooks All Berries and the cotton candy one together. So that's what I would do quite a bit. Um, I think the most interesting one was for sure the Sour Patch Kids. How was that one? It was good for short periods of time. Like, just yeah, like too, too sweet and sour. <laughs> it was different. Yeah, um, yeah. I would say like I, I got it wasn't bad. Some people hated it. I saw like, but. Um, no, I thought it was good. I just couldn't eat a, a whole lot of it in a sitting. You know what I mean? 
You, yeah. you know, the funny thing is like, cause I'm not a sweet tooth dude. So like out of all these, I'm like, yo, these are going to taste so sweet and like, uh, <laughs> I'm like, oh no. I actually would go for literally whatever that Korean Cheerio looking like one. It's pretty much just Cheerio. Yeah, it's pretty much, but like, it's a little different. Like, it's not quite Cheerios. They're not like completely like a round O shape. Okay. They're kind of like, they're kind of like, um, shaped like this all around. Mm. So it's a little different, but, um, no, they were good. They were good. And like, I got that, um, some, uh, Korean, his name's Eric. Eric sent that to me. He um, used to be with this company called uh, Trophy Hunters in Korea. And um, he knew I liked cereal. So with the package they gave me for the clothes, he just threw that in the in the, um, the thing with it, which was pretty cool. And the drumstick one, too. The drumstick one looks pretty pretty badass. That was cool. I think that's the mint. They have, they have two different kinds. Um, I think that may be the mint one. I can't tell. But um, no, nah, that was the drumstick one was cool, too. I actually never ate the the Halloween one. I like I just moved like a month ago and I threw that one away. <laughs> I never ate the fruit wow, loop Halloween good. one. I don't know. I just I just I just kept getting more cereal and and I kept putting that one off and then it went bad. So yeah. Mm, all right. Yeah. All right, my man. Those are some some memories. Yeah, yeah. That was cool. That's cool. All right. Well, that's sort of it, man. I mean, I want to now just. The stage is yours. You take the stage, whether it's on the Arnold's, your, your posing routines, whether it's the Olympia or stuff. But right now on Serving It Up podcast, the stage is yours. Feel free to say, tell anybody and viewers whatever you want to know. Okay, yeah, 100%, man. I had, a, I had a good time. Awesome, awesome. Is there any, any like, any, what's your, what's your uh, are you still taking coaching? Um, what's the handles for, you know, tribe, et cetera. Oh, okay. 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 Well, um, I am taking a couple clients here and there, uh, roughdiesel.com. You can, you can, um, check out my coaching or whatever else I have, uh, pre-made programs too. If the coaching is a little bit too expensive, uh, then you can get some pre-made stuff, which I think is still fantastic stuff. Um, uh, let's see. Let's see what else. Um, clothing line, tribeaesthetics.com. And uh, shout out to my sponsors, you know, Steel Supplements. Yeah. Um, definitely really happy with them. Um, I just had a talk with the owner the other day. He's a bodybuilder like me, man, just a, a normal dude. Paul. Um, not Paul. Paul is a Paul and younger Jason. brother. Jason, yeah. Jason also, yeah. He's insane. He's a bear. They're both dude, he's bear. <laughs> My goodness, Jason slimmed down quite a bit, man. But nah, you know, dude, like I saw, like it's crazy because when I signed up with them, uh, um, mid about a a little, um, it'll be almost a year now. Um, but when I signed, I signed up with them. You know, I signed with them because I, I like their morals, I like their values. But you know, I've been with them a year now, man, and like it's been awesome, man. Like I, I like I had a talk with them the other day. And um, we were ne renegotiating our contract and everything. And they were like, I'm so happy uh, with, with him being in charge. And um, because, dude, like, it's like, I, like, so, like, I can't get into details, but like, yeah. I, um, with the new contract, I asked for something. And he was like, no, nah, fuck that, give him more. And I was like, okay, well, <laughs> and he didn't have to do that. He could have, like, People any other them. business would have been like, that's okay, let's just give him what he asked for and that, and that nothing more. But nice. he, um, him being, you know, a good, I guess a good person and also a former body, a retired bodybuilder, he was like, nah, this, you know. So that was, dude, that was awesome. I remember when I first met him or like so first heard of him, it was actually mm -hmm. yes from like bodybuilding or stuff like that. Was from mm -hmm. his steak cooking videos. Because I'm like <laughs> a big, brutally Asian dude that's aesthetic, <laughs> but like trained without sock, without shoes, and then has his beard, and he's just like eating raw steaks and like cutting steaks. I'm like, okay, cool. You know what? I like you. I dig it. I dig it. And I yeah, just, he's cool, like, man. Yeah, for sure. He, he loves sure, man. He loves his steaks, so that's cool. All right, <laughs> what, what, other, uh, what, other, what other sponsors you got? Shout them out. Oh man, I'm uh, I'm probably like I wasn't ready for this. But, yeah, I don't really know. Uh, shout out to them. Shout out to Tough Tough Raps. That's a new sponsor of mine. 
Uh, they got pretty cool like uh, wrist wraps. I like them because they don't have like that weird thumb loop anymore. Mm. Is um, they just wrap around, which is pretty. They got like this cool like system. I don't know how to explain it, but like this system <laughs> that that's involved. And the cool thing is, man, like both those companies are here in Florida. So like, nice. Jason Jason lives in Sarasota, which is like forty five minutes away. And um, Tough Wraps, they're a little bit further right now, but they, they're looking at a facility in Tampa. So they're going to be, like, literally, like, you know, driving, like, distance pretty pretty soon from there. Sure. Um, so it's really – and they're, both of them are family-owned businesses too, man. So I just – I've always been with family-owned businesses, whether it was, you know, with Matt, MPA, that was family-owned business. And, dude, it's just – I just I just like that, 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 uh, that feeling, man, because a lot of times – um the big companies they don't care as much and um their morals are a little bit different and uh I, I can't I can't I can't sit by if they're doing something weird or shady. So um no nah, man I'm really happy with, with those two guys. I don't think I have anything else um to promote kind of thing. I got yeah, I don't really have anything. All good. All right. Yeah. I won't keep you too long. It's been amazing. Hope you guys hope you had a good time. Thanks for joining me, man. No problem, man. Thanks for having me on the first, the first one. First episode for sure. It's gonna be historic. <laughs> Can't wait. Can't wait to have you probably on another episode. We'll get a little more deep dive into some other cool stuff. Talk about more everything like that. But um, until then, stay safe, dude. All right. You too, man. All right. Take care. <laughs>